Hello and welcome to this Warhammer 40k 8th edition video with me, Mark, from the Xenobis channel. So, Games Workshop has just released their, well, when you're, whenever you're watching this video, have released their live Q&A about 8th edition and I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can watch that. I would say it's worth the watch because they go through a lot of things. What I'm going to do is summarise everything they've kind of said about it uh, for you. So you can watch this before or after watching the full video. I would recommend watching the full video though. Now, um, through the video they're getting live uh, questions through it. They sometimes, they go through most of the questions. There's a lot of questions that over conflict each other. So, um, movement statistics and characteristics are in for every single model, unit, vehicle, monster, that's in. Um, I think this is kind of cool. They do it in Age of Sigmar and did it in uh, the fantasy. It makes sense. Previous editions had it. I believe uh, Tyranids were like six inch movement where men were a four inch movement. It makes it more realistic. Um, I am gonna say I did speak about these changes to um, a few people that I know, some people that don't know Games Workshop or Warhammer 40k rules, but I said to them in the terms of a game, how does this sound? And they said, well, that sounds obvious. So it sounds like it's gonna be better for the new player, everything they're doing, but also trying to keep it fun for the old veterans. Um, vehicles do not have armor values. Vehicles have a damage table that reduces their stats as they take damage. This is huge. I'm going to go onto it later, but they talk about how weapons, all weapons can affect anything. This is going to make the game more killy. And so what they'll have, for example, say a land raider has, let's give it 20 life points or hull points. Now, as it goes down, just like in Age of Sigmar, things start to happen. So if you take it down to, say, 15 hull points, it's now shooting at one less ballistic skill. If it goes down to 10 hull points, it's now shooting at one less ballistic skill and one of the weapons now doesn't work, and then so on and so forth. That's the kind of scaling it will do with that, and I believe they're gonna do that with monsters as well. It means simple weapons can hurt vehicles, but obviously things like the Land Raider will still be harder to hit because of all the hull points. It's also there to stop one-shot kills. So you may have seen on our battle reports, I'll fire my fire prism, I'll shoot the lance weapon at the monolith, um, Ian's Necron monolith, and I'll roll on the pen and I get a six and it's just blown up, gone. That will never happen now. So your models will stay on there a little bit longer, which will be fun, but there'll be more realism to the damage that's happening on the table. It means a lot of units can be more killy though. For example, Termagants now, or Laz guns from Imperial Guard, Astra Militarum, shall I say, um, an Orc Bolter. Everything has an armor piercing value. It has a damage characteristic. They may only do one damage, but that one damage is gonna be significant because it can be used to take down some things. So I'm seeing a bit of the meta change from just this, and it's gonna be armies that are good at moving with these movement characteristics. I think Elder and Tyranids will benefit from that. Shooting is still strong, even more so because more weapons can hurt things, making it more killy. And later on we'll talk about close combat and how that affects things because that becomes a little bit fairer, I think, as well. But I'm seeing Orcs and Tyranids kind of moving up a bit because now their simple weapons can do things. My Carnifex is with their Devourers, couldn't hurt monoliths, couldn't hurt land raiders, and couldn't really hurt Necron vehicles either. Now, they have a chance of killing lots of different things. So, I'm liking it for a Tyranid and Orc kind of player. Um, it's still gonna be a D6 system, which is good. We will recognize it nice and simple. Um, all the rules that they've implemented are trying to speed up the game of 40K. Um, a 1500 point game 
will now last around 90 minutes, which is great. Ian and I can get our load more done. We could film a lot more now. Um, and it makes it more fun rather than having the whole day, the whole afternoon, the whole chunk of time just to play the one game. You can now get a couple in um, or bring two extra players and do the same equivalent time frame as what it would be for previous editions. So I think that's good as long as the rules aren't simple. They can simplify it, but as long as they're not simple and dumbed down, then hopefully. Um, there will be three ways to play. We, we saw this before, um, and same of Age of Sigmar. Narrative um, play where you can play certain missions. Open play, which means bring what you want. And match play, where it will be points system with that. They didn't go into details with for example, how many points a Space Marine or a Space Marine unit is, um, they're obviously saving that. Um, all models receive new rules in this edition, including vehicles, including scenery. They briefly touched upon Forge World having this, but they didn't state it would happen from release date, um, which kind of affects mine and Ian's plans because we're looking to do a big grand scale battle for around Christmas and winter time. And if Forge World models haven't been updated yet, then it might prove hard if we want to use those models. Um, we'll also go into things about codexes because codexes are going to die. Your edition right now, basically. They're going to be bringing in something called Command Points. And they've got 14 Force Organisation Charts. And these force organization charts allow you to get command points. And the command points can interrupt the opposing player or give you benefits. So, for example, if your opponent has assaulted you, they've done their attack and they're going to do another assault that has, is going to be happening. You can use command points to say to interrupt that and then fight back first. As if you're a general, your troops have kind of taken the advantage or taken someone by surprise. They gave the impression that command points would be rule-centric towards that army. So Eldar, quite tricky. So whether a command point could give you a free flat-out move, I'm just speculating here. Or Tau, give an extra shot at ballistic skill, a lower ballistic skill maybe. Um, Tyranids, an extra run when they move, kind of things like that. So there's 14 force orgs, and I'm guessing they'll allow you to kind of build your army towards a certain play style and give you benefits. Ian enjoys gunline armies. He loves his Tau. He always loves the heavy weaponry. If there's a force org which says, bring free heavy supports, a fortification, and so many of different things, get extra benefits towards shooting, he'll probably do that. And that's great because that benefits his playstyle. But if it's my playstyle where I like fast maneuverable units and disrupting units and they have a force org for me, that might be slightly better for me. How it changes our battle league and our point system now, we may have to reset the army lists to use these force orgs. But it kind of gives new players and old players a different way of playing or benefits to the way they play right now. Templates are going away. There will be no more template weapons. What it looks like is going to happen is you'll have the range of the gun and then it will just do X amount of damage. So the flamer, which will be short range, will be say a D6 wounds rather than just whoever's under the template. Again, with an Ordnance Blast, because that's gone, the Ordnance Blast weapons will probably be D6 plus 3, or 2D6, or just damage 8, which is 8 wounds. So, <coughs> makes things a little bit um, quicker again, because you're not rolling for a scatter dice, essentially, and trying to balance units on, you'll know, right, I'm shooting you, it's a damage of 8, there's eight damage there, you've got to do eight saves. Okay, so they want to be a, shy away from these templates. Um, 
A lot of playtesting has gone on. Reese and Frankie from the Las Vegas Open and Mike from Nova has done tons of playtesting. So they've used people used to playing the game away from Games Workshop in the tournament scenes that play it competitively and obviously will play narrative campaigns for these guys if they were testing it. So a lot of testing has gone into it. It's not just Matt Ward-esque where he's gone, hmm, what sounds good? Oh, a psychic phase. Yeah, that'd be good. And then we'll do this and then we'll add this section. And no, they've play tested, trying to push towards helping the community. There was a lot in this video about helping the community. Everyone will get their new rules on day one. Five books will have the rules for all the armies at a very low price point. So, trying to help people on day one. Um, codexes will come out, new additional thematic updates at a future update. Um, so, it, similar to how Age of Sigmar is going, um, I think an army like the Oryx, or Orcs, I think they've got a Savage Orc style of army and then an Iron Jaws style of army. So still the same faction, but slightly different models and different ways to play them. Now, that's cool. It's going to be a new way for Games Workshop to make more money out of everyone, obviously. But I'm hoping that one of my codexes comes out sooner rather than later, obviously. But they'll probably do it with the favourites happening first. Um, but if the rule books come out day one, they'll probably do PDFs on their website. For example, Tyranid PDF, all their rule changes, for example, movement six, hits on a free plus for shooting, hits on a free plus for wounding, save of a four plus. I can see it going that kind of way. Um, Expansions like City of Death and Planet Strike will be brought up to speed. Every unit has been play tested and has been balanced. This will be the most robust balance and balanced edition of 40k. There won't be any broken units like Riptides. Riptides are okay. There are ways to make them broken, which they do talk about, such as Death Stars, and how they see Death Star units as loopholes to rules they never intended to happen, because it's never fun to bring your army that you've worked hard on and your opponent brings their army and it's just a Death Star and you're like, right, let's just play, turn three, you killed me, I knew it was gonna happen, which is never fun. So more balance, more things are gonna die. More likely they're not gonna survive. Games are quicker. So now it's down to you choosing your army list and your command characteristics, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's going to be a general's handbook. Um, they want the game to evolve with community feedback. I think other games companies do this anyway, but it's great to see they're listening to the community. There will be an army builder app, but it's not ready yet. To be fair to them, they do have hundreds of bits of data to convert into this new system, so that's fine. When it comes out, I'm probably going to have to get it. I use Army Builder at the moment. If Army Builder will update, then I'll continue using that. There are not specific tournament rules, but there are guidelines for organisers, so they're being more friendly to competitive scenes, which is good. Um, they're pushing the thematic battle between Imperium and Chaos, so they're focusing on that. Okay, that those are your big boys. Horus Heresy is already part of that. But I'm more of a Xeno Eldar, Tyranids, Orcs, Dark Eldar. That's my stuff. So I'm worried they're not going to get as much love. But I understand if that's the direction they want to go in. Um, all the factions and models will be represented in the new edition. So again, PDFs I presume. Um, they did mention with army lists that, for example, you'll have a way of buying a unit, say it's X amount of points, you can upgrade that unit by buying weapons for them, but it's not as difficult as or complicated as it is right now. 
Any new factions coming? Yes. New factions coming. I'm hoping brand new races and not just a, a branch off of say Eldar and stuff and they're just painted slightly differently and got little bits and bobs. New stuff is cool. The stuff they've been doing for Age of Sigmar is brilliant so. Um, yeah monstrous creatures use stats like vehicles, I've gone through that. Everything can hurt everything, las guns can hurt tanks as mentioned. No stat is capped at 10 anymore. So we will be going over 10 wounds, 10 toughness, 10 hold points. So I'm going to see things like Wraith Knights and Pyro Knights are going to be the big bad boys with the big weapons. But again, if they're going with the Age of Sigmar style, they'll get less effective as they go along. So they're not the big baddies they once were. Makes it a little bit fairer for everyone else. Um, but it means you have to be a little bit more tactical with what you do as well. Bigger weapons do more damage. Um, allied forces will still be available. Cross army bonuses will be limited. For example, it will say this bonus benefit will only happen to those from Codex Eldar and so won't ha happen to Dark Eldar and stuff like that. They still have an allies chart. Um, there are benefits to sticking to a single faction with your command points. Um, there's there was a slight oversight with the galaxy map. They seem to have condensed it a lot. They're saying they haven't blown it up like Age of Sigmar was. They've just condensed it, made it a little bit more smaller, a little bit intimate. Um, Forge World rules will be available in the same way, but again, no deadline was given. And storyline will continue forward for the next few years, but no radical changes to the story, just slight progression. And we saw slight progression with the build up to this edition seeing a Primarch born, an avatar of Eldar born, Chaos is trying to do a little bit more naughty things and stuff. Um, if you've just bought a codex or a rule book, the customer service team will be handing out vouchers within eight weeks of the announcement to cover cost of rule books. So I'm hoping in the next eight weeks, I think that's when it's probably going to be coming out the next couple of months anyway. So yeah, that's just a roundup of the Q&A stuff. Like I said, link is in the description below. Enjoy the video. Please comment in the comment section below about what you like, what you don't like, and what you're excited for. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Mark from the Xenovage channel. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.